What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 dangerous WWE moves that should be banned forever. Now, we're gonna check out some of these moves that uh, may not uh, need to be, I guess, redone or replicated um, as it used to be, you know, in the past. Like, certain moves that they used to do shouldn't be done now. Obviously, with knowing the effects of some of these moves would have on someone if it's been. If it's being done over, you know, over time, it can, you know, affect them uh, wrestlers in the long run. So it's good to kind of have that self-awareness. But we're going to check out some of the moves that they feel like maybe should still be banned even today. Appreciate all love and support y'all showing in on the channel. Let's see what uh, WrestleMania has for us. 10 dangerous WWE moves that should be retired forever. Number 10, dive to the outside. Visually speaking, the dive to the outside can look like an impressive move. However, when the move is being used in every match and sometimes even being used multiple times in one 10 minute contest, the move quickly loses its spark. Oh, for it's sure. It's a trend over the past 15 years that most matches in WWE feature the dive spot and it's become so expected that fans react to the spot as if a wrestler has just performed a chop or a punch. The move has no legitimacy and the risk simply isn't worth the reward. It goes without saying that this is one of the most dangerous moves in modern wrestling, as a wrestler delivering the Ooh. move can easily land on their head and things can go wrong in an instant. It's also become a major criticism that the move is insanely staged. The wrestler or wrestlers taking the move will often stand on the outside yeah. of the ring patiently waiting to catch their opponent. This often looks awkward and completely exposes how the move is being done. That's Dub's favorite move right there. <laughs> Number nine, buckle bomb. If a move I honestly yeah, I wouldn't ban it. I just it just shouldn't be used as much. It's damn near used in every single match, bro. It's crazy how much they overuse the dive to the to the outside. If it ends up injuring wrestlers, then top wrestling companies such as WWE should look to ban the move outright. The buckle bomb is an interesting move to take as the margin for error is slim. And more often than not, the wrestler taking the move is oh. injured due to no fault of their opponent. Seth Rollins is known for using the move, and whilst it's become a part of Rollins' arsenal, the move is still considered to be dangerous by many, and the move doesn't receive a reaction that warrants Rollins delivering such a dangerous move. Rollins would receive the same reaction by performing a traditional powerbomb, which is considered relatively safer to do. Oh my god! Rollins could even introduce a modified version of the powerbomb, which would easily make up for the buckle bomb being retired indefinitely. Number 8. Diving Headbutt it's a huge surprise that a blanket ban on diving headbutts haven't been introduced. Yeah. Numerous wrestlers who have used the move have gone into neck and concussion related issues. Names such as Harley Race, Chris Benoit and Brian Danielson all use the move and it would be naive to state that a diving headbutt didn't influence their respective injuries. When it comes to the late great Race who is widely regarded as the creator of the move, he admitted that he cites the diving headbutt as one of the reasons for his retirement. Ray stopped doing the move during his final few matches as he knew that's what was causing his immense pain and was inevitably going to cause him a long-term damage. And it's, it's really crazy when you think about it, like, I mean, it's a move where they're literally diving head first into an opponent, whether, you know, they're hitting their head or not. Um, you know, they're diving head first into somebody that's going to cause some head neck trauma doing that over and over and over and over and over for sure. Uh, you really, you don't see it as much, but I can understand why a company would want to ban it. But you don't, you don't really see the diving head, but uh, as much though. According to WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle, the move has a sort of whiplash effect, which can ultimately injure the body. Angle discussed this on his podcast, and as always, offered a fascinating insight. No, I don't think it was dangerous from a head perspective, a concussion perspective. Chris doesn't really headbutt you. He just yeah. kind of lands. His face lands a little bit on your shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. It's not a very, you know, detrimental move. The only thing that would occur is whiplashing your own back and neck because you're landing on your stomach. So I think that's the problem Chris had with his neck. I think it had a lot to do with the diving headbutt. Oh, for sure. But, uh, you know, sometimes you can accidentally misjudge it and, you know, accidentally maybe hit somebody here you could concuss yourself or if you don't hit them you can end up just hitting the ring mat that's you can still concuss yourself it's a dangerous move for sure despite this wrestling companies such as wwe still allow wrestlers to use the move and chad gable is currently using the move on the main roster this is um yeah he's one of the few people that actually does use the move it's it's like i said it's a rare move it doesn't get done much i don't think people would trip over it granted I can see a company, especially WWE, being like, 
maybe we shouldn't do it as much, but they they allow him to do it. Fortunate, and hopefully Gable doesn't have long-term problems with his neck. And if he begins to have pain in that area, then he should cease from using the move indefinitely. Number seven, the figure four leg lock. The figure four I don't know about this associated one. associated with Ric Flair, and for good reason. Flair's version of the move is well established for being the gold standard when it comes to the move. And although wrestlers from countless generations have tried to emulate Flair, nobody has been able to hold a candle to the way Ric Flair delivered the move. Whenever a wrestler does a move in modern day wrestling, the move receives an initial reaction, and this is only down to the association with Flair. Okay, There's I get that point. Audible woos, and then the reaction quickly dies down when the wrestler can't deliver the move correctly. Now, there is certainly a strong argument to be made that the move should have been retired when Flair stepped back from active competition. His daughter, Charlotte Flair, manages to deliver a solid version of the move known as the figure eight, and a bridge modification makes the move stand out. So yeah, I like I like the like her version of her father's move, but she added her own little flair to it, no pun intended. And it looks good, it looks visually painful, adding the bridge to it. I do I do like that. But I can see what he's saying. Like, so many wrestlers use that move, and it's anonymous. I don't know if it should be banned. I, I think it's a move that, obviously, it's a, I guess you can say, it's like a, a, a tribute to one of the greatest, you know, to ever lace up some wrestling boots. Like, a, a tribute to Ric Flair, in a sense. Especially compared to other basic versions of the move. The iconic figure four no longer being part of matches would be a weird sight, yet if the credibility of the move is being destroyed on a weekly basis, is it even worth keeping the submission-based move around? And that's a fair point, because it's supposed to be a, a submission move. It's supposed to be a move that essentially incapacitates your opponent to the point where they can't walk, they can't use their legs. And a lot of times, it's worn, <laughs> the effects somehow are worn off within the first few minutes, first few seconds of that. Number six, the leg drop. It's often the case that fans have no idea oh. how dangerous a move can be until wrestlers speak out. This has been the case with the leg drop, as for the longest time, it just seemed like a basic move that caused little damage. According to Hulk Hogan, the move has caused him so much damage over the years that he wishes he picked a different finishing move. Hogan did the move for decades, and although yeah. he's notoriously struggled with the truth, he's without question telling the truth when it comes to <laughs> do. He's telling the truth. who deliver the move from the top or middle rope have also shared similar thoughts, with Matt Hardy stating that he got injured from delivering the leg drop at the top of the steel cage back oh! in 2005. Oh my god, I don't care what nobody say, that was one of the craziest leg drops of all time and one of the craziest feuds in WWE. Oh! spine everything just gg left the chat oh my god his name speaking out regarding the dangers in the move haven't influenced anyone to stop delivering it as weirdly the leg drop has never been more common it would likely take a direct ban from the company such as wwe to see wrestlers removing the move from their arsenal and the only way this ban would occur would be if a modern day wrestler got seriously injured delivering the move and it was citing that the leg drop was a primary cause of that injury I don't, I don't think it should be banned because it's such a beautiful move and you don't really see it much, honestly. So I don't know. This one, I don't know if it should be banned forever. I, I think this is kind of a, a spur of the moment. It depends. It's a beautiful move and you know it's very impactful to the person that's, you know, actually doing it, to be honest with you. So Number five, DDT. Whenever Jake Roberts delivered a DDT, it was a given that the match was completely over. Roberts I get got it. one in essence is a basic move over to such a degree that not a single wrestler in the history of wrestling has managed to replicate the success that Roberts had with the DDT. The move can look awesome and it can also look credible if presented correctly. However, the DDT hasn't been presented as a legitimate move in decades. Yeah. As things stand, the move is a transition move at best. Yep. If it was going to be used as a finisher, then a modification is usually offered, as wrestlers don't seem to believe that fans will take the standard DDT seriously nope. as a credible finisher. The DDT has a place in today's wrestling, yet it would be a smart idea if it was retired as a standard transitional move, and the DDT should be built back up as an established finisher. I, I I I like the idea because the DDT is just a transitional move. No one is, is worried about getting hit with a DDT unless it's a modification and it would have to be some type of modification to kind of buy into it. But even then, it's still just like a it's a transitional move. So I can understand. I wouldn't say ban it, but it shouldn't be a transitional move. If anything, it should be a move when someone hits it, kind of, you know, it creates that 
you know, that effect of, damn, he got slammed on his head, you know what I'm saying? This may be, like, probably, like, a break spot, if anything, like, it took, it takes this effect. Should it be a finisher? Depending on how it's modified, but banned? I don't know about that. Before Top Rope Double Foot Stomp, majority of wrestling moves should always have an element of logic attached to them. However, when it comes to the Top Rope Stomp, uh, okay. there's no logic whatsoever. Okay, I can agree with this. It looks cool, but... The wrestlers hold themselves up to get stomped. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, I, I get it. They're taking the move will hold onto the ropes whilst their opponent will come crashing down. Yeah, he just they stomp. The move makes no sense. Whatsoever. It makes no it's sense. Slightly dangerous. The move makes no sense whatsoever. Why is a wrestler holding onto the ropes <laughs> and just waiting there to be stomped into the mat? The move is hard to explain from a kayfabe point of view, and even names such as Michael Cole don't even bother offering a rational explanation as to how the move works. The move should be retired as soon as possible, as it greatly exposes the pro wrestling business and ultimately makes the person taking the move look incredibly incompetent, which should always be avoided when delivering big time moves. Number three, I'm, a, I'm in agreement to that. Some fans argue that the spear is overused in WWE, and the argument does have some merit. However, due to the move being known for being the finisher of Roman Reigns, WWE do try to commit to protecting the move as much as possible. When it comes to the spear, there is a version of the move. I like that he said this because the spirit through the barricade has it, it it's been super overdone. Like the barricade's not even it, it gives off it gives the barricade this idea that it's damn near like a Lego set and it's just easy to break. Like it only makes sense in certain situations, certain matches, certain feuds, cool, certain wrestlers, but the spirit through the barricade spot has been overdone i wouldn't say ban it just don't do it as much <laughs> or rather a spot involving the spear that has been so overused that it's become stale and predictable wwe loves to deliver a spot which sees a wrestler get speared through the barricade let's even just negate the dangers of this move this spot is present on what seems like every major event wwe yeah. produce and whilst visually it looks great they become over reliant on the spot to obtain a cheap pop number two the German fair point suplex. If Mick Foley of all people calls the move unsafe, then maybe it's time to reassess if that move should be allowed in modern wrestling. The German suplex has been around for decades, and the move is especially common in today's landscape of Ooh. wrestling, as it's typical for a match to feature multiple instances of the move, and wrestlers even like to introduce their own variations. According to Foley on his podcast, the move is legitimately dangerous. Oh, it's for sure. Years off a wrestler's career. I just don't like German suplexes. I think that over time they shorten careers and they destroy the quality of life. So people can attack me for that. One, you know there's little margin for error. It is more margin for error on the German suplex, but that it's just over time it's going to wear you out. You couldn't show the match that Daniel Garcia had with Willie Jutta to any reasonable orthopedic guy who would say that what those guys were doing was not going to lend itself to a poor quality of life. Fair Another point. legendary wrestler who's chimed in on this topic is Rob Fair Van point. Dam, who stated on his podcast that although he likes the move, certain wrestlers can be reckless and yeah. hold their opponents hard and fast. I like the German suplex. It's actually a go-to that I would do in a real-life situation, more so than a match, you know what I mean? It's a great move, and it's pretty when someone does a bridge and holds it. It's not, to me, one of the most dangerous moves. Some people do look like they don't take care of their opponents and really yeah. throw them hard and fast on their head. And of course, that would be a different situation than just asking about a move. The move has to be performed by wrestlers who know what they're doing. Medusa put it best when she stated that the wrestlers need to learn how to perfect it in order to execute it safely. And if the wrestlers are just being reckless with a move that could easily lead to broken Ooh. necks, then it's time that a serious discussion took place regarding the safety of the popular move. Hey, Brock didn't give a fuck. When he was doing the suplex, he was just throwing you. He didn't give two shits. I wouldn't say ban it because it is a, a beautiful wrestling move and it does look painful to the person receiving it. It does look like a viable move to just throw someone on the top of their head. But you don't see it as much. Gunther using it makes sense because all his moves are very simplistic but very hard hitting. Certain wrestlers using it, Chad Gable, makes sense. Olympic background, not everybody using it, but in certain situations, I think it should still be used, but not often. Like when Gunther does it, obviously the opponent's feeling the effect. And it's, you know, it, it sets up for him to do the power bomb or whatever else, maybe choke you out. He's using wrestling moves that are effective, simple, and get the job done. So I wouldn't ban it. Just not everybody should be using it. And number one, the super kick. 
Well, the question, Since number two. The overused move in modern day wrestling is the super kick. Oh, for the sure. Did you see the move oh, in my God. The 80s and 90s. And if the move was going to be used, then it was usually a signature or a primary finishing move. Shawn Michaels was a man who made the move famous as his sweet chin music became known for being one of the most iconic moves of all time. Yet sadly, if HBK debuted today, he would have a very tough task in getting the move over as virtually every wrestler in WWE uses it. Every wrestler uses it, bro. The move used it, to be protected and it used to have significance. However, these days are long gone and it's rare that a super kick even receives a reaction from the audience. The move has been overused to the point of no overuse, return. Overused, bro. The move was retired, or at least wrestlers band together to vastly reduce the number of times the move is being done in a matchup. If this is done, then in a few years the move can be brought back, and hopefully the aura and legitimacy of the move can once again return. Well, there you have it, folks. Ten dangerous. Yeah, man. I, I'm in agreement with this one. On that particular one, yeah, the super kick is heavily, heavily, heavily overused. I mean, <laughs> in all forms of wrestling, not just WWE, AEW, I think that's a move that should be died down. I ain't going to lie to you. Everybody uses it. So it's not, it's literally become a setup move, to be honest with you. Like, everybody uses the damn super kick. So I don't know. I, I, I do think it should be a situation where it shouldn't be used as much. But comment down below. Let me know, do you agree with some of these uh, moves on this list being banned forever? or used at a limited capacity or uh, or do you feel like you know that uh there should be some more added to this list i'm sure there's some other moves y'all feel like shouldn't be used on here uh well should be on here and shouldn't be used as much in the wrestling scene y'all give me your opinions down below if y'all agree with the list don't agree with the list and if you were to add something to this band wrestling move list what would it be but i appreciate all the love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see you next one peace